So this is a 68 year old female. She co comes to her local doctor and has sinus infections every three or four months. Um, usual stuff we all hear about with purulent postnasal drip. Uh, she's got mostly right sided symptoms with facial pressure and they get better with antibiotics. But, but over time she's developed um, this, this uh, sore on her right cheek and, and, and has that with this episode. So her history before that, she had some sinus drainage procedure, you know, well over a decade ago. She's not really sure what that was, uh, but she's also had some history of head trauma in, in, in the remote past many decades ago. Uh, no other specific comorbid factors, and she's just on a, on a baby aspirin. Pretty healthy lady, in fact. So she's sent to me and evaluated in the office, and there I, I see this uh, nice um, middle meatal um, collection of purulence, it's kind of a, just what I thought was a raging acute sinusitis. I suctioned it, cultured it, it grew Staph aureus. I put her on augmentin and some bacterial irrigations, um, and then came back for follow-up. So th this is what, she, you know, the, the, that, that's the little spot on her face that that ulcer dries up, her facial pressure goes away. Um, she's got um, just some mild postnasal drip and her, her endoscopic exam looks better. So, okay, well, you know, she, she looks good at follow up and I just told her, well, okay, well, let's just see what happens and we'll, we'll follow you for more, more closely uh, over time and um, everything's up, seemed good. Um, but then I see her four months later and, and she just looks like this again. Same problem, she's got that um, low grade sinus pressure, she's got postnatal drip, um, that sore opens up again and it's, it's got this serosanguinous drainage, more pus, more staph. Um, and so then I get this CAT scan and, and uh, here it's, it's kind of an interesting uh, CT scan where uh, it, it, the uh, uncinate process is right here it's almost like an atelectatic sinus. And here you see some uh, floor disruption there, uh, maybe from her trauma in the past. Um, and then the disease in, in the ipsilateral maxillary that, that, that one would expect. Um, this is just another image there. And, and uh, these are obviously, uh, you see this uh, disruption there. And perhaps this is where it's tracking to form that little uh, sore out to the skin. Uh, so. You know, I thought, well, okay, what are my options here? I can just clean her out in the office. Clearly, she has a um, some. There, there's a possibility, maybe I could balloon it, or uh, if, am I going to do a, a surgery? Am I going to open up that that uh, maxillary? You know, I, in the images I showed you there, you, you saw this atelectatic uncinate process where it was drawn into the sinus. But then, you know, looking at it endoscopically, she had an open posterior fontanelle. I could have, you know, just at least drained it through that. Um, Am I going to do a maxillary mega os like the one I showed you? If, you know, things like I probably wouldn't have done a call with luck. What do we do about that little sore that's there? You know, all these questions uh, come up. So, um, you know, I thought at this point she, she needed an operation, though. Exactly what I was going to do, though, you know, I, I wasn't really sure at the time, but I wanted to make a nice wide antrostomy and, and, and clean things out. So, uh, this is us in surgery. And uh, uh, th there you see this, this wide uh, fontanelle that's there already. Um, you know, I, I removed the, the uncinate process that had been left before um, but from her previous surgery. You know, I, I wash out the sinus. And uh, then, you know, some interesting things started coming into view that uh, she had this uh, loculation there that, that was lower down in the sinus. But then there's also this sort of funny uh, pseudo membrane that, that, that I saw up here uh, on the roof of the, of the maxillary uh, where the orbital floor was. So, you know, this is that loculation opened up and more of that that pus which we were able to wash out. But then as I started manipulating around that, um, uh, around the uh, sinus roof, of, you know, and, and start clearing out some of the uh, of the biofilm or whatever was over that, I, I, I see this stuff and, and I'm able to, to peel it out. And what, what this was, was a, was a piece of um, Gore-Tex that had been put in there 30 years ago when she had the, that, that trauma. Um, and so that, that's what that looked like. And it was interesting because it was extruding the whole time and, and it was just kind of encased in this uh, fibrinous purulent uh, coat. And I, in the office, I never appreciated it uh, for what it was. And certainly it's not something that has radiologic appearance that a wire mesh would. And so I didn't really know it was ever, ever there. And, and it, it, it pulled right out pretty easily. Um, and you can see the, the dimensions of that thing there. So the, that fistula, we closed it with just within a lips and primary closure. She had some infraorbital rim screws that were there that weren't in the cuts of the CT I showed you, but those were stable and we elected to, to leave those there. And after that, she's just, you know, the fistula site was dry. She said no sinus infection. She said no vision problems. I mean, it's really finally cured the problem after it was just uh, fiddled with for, for years. So the, the things I learned about this is um, early CT scan. Uh, I probably should have got one the first time, especially knowing her, her history of trauma. Uh, 
This patient was not responding to medical management. Um, I, I really couldn't evaluate the interior of the sinus as well as I could have. Um, other things you find on these CAT scans, uh, you know, with retained cells and partitions, um, and occasionally you find odontogenic sources. That, that really is the most common etiology for these isolated maxillary diseases, although it wasn't in this particular case. Um, and then, you know, just thinking outside the box about uh, foreign bodies also and some, uh, about immune deficiencies and other reasons why the patient's not getting better. I mean, it, 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 it should have been a red enough flag that you know, this patient had this problem three or four times a year that kept cyclically um, exacerbating that um, just because I got it to submit the one time that I treated it doesn't mean that I actually did anything to investigate the problem on a, on a level greater than what it had before. So that's my little interesting case. Thank you. Questions? Mm -hmm.